So welcome to part two for substitution. Um, what we learned about yesterday, we learned that, you know, if you've got two equations that are set as y equals, or it could even be x equals, as long as you've got it where one variable is isolated on both of them and it's the same variable, you could take these and essentially just set them equal to each other and then solve for, like in this case, we would set these two examples to each other, solve for the x, find out what x is, substitute it into one of them, and solve for the y, and then use the other to check. So let me go over an example of this one more time. So both of these are equal to y, that means that they're actually equal to each other. So we have 6x plus 19 is actually going to be set equal to a negative 2x minus 5. Okay, so in a case like this, the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and get x over to one side. So I move my smaller x, which happens to be that negative 2x, and I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So by adding 2x to both sides, that's going to leave me with an 8x plus 19 is now equal to a negative 5. Then I can go ahead and subtract 19 from both sides. That would leave me with 8x is now equal to a negative 24. And then I would divide both sides by 8. And I would get that x needs to be equal to negative 3. Now that I've solved for that x, I can pick, so this would be my step 1, right? In this case, this would be step 1. Step 2 is to do the substitution part. Plug it in. So I'm going to pick my first equation, y is equal to 6x plus 19. And I'm going to substitute that x with a negative 3. So I now have y is equal to 6 times negative 3 plus 19. Well, 6 times negative 3 is going to give me a negative 18. And then negative 18 plus the 9, 19, is going to give me a positive 1. So I would then get y is equal to 1. And then from there, you would move on to the last part step three, which is to check it. So in order to check it, you choose the other equation that you have not yet used. So for this case, it would be the y is equal to negative 2x minus 5. And you replace the y with the 1. And you replace the x with your negative 3. And you check to see, hey, is this a true statement? So we have 1 is equal to negative 2 times negative 3 minus 5. So that gives us 1 is equal to a positive 6 minus 5, and 1 is equal to 1, so then you do have a true solution. So in this case, your solution would be negative 3 and positive 1. Okay, so that's the process if both equations are isolated down to the exact same variable. But what if both equations are not in y equals mx plus b form? So what if they are not both y equals and y equals? What do we do then? So I've gone ahead and wrote the steps that you would need to do ahead of time because it makes the video go a little bit faster. So the very first thing that you would need to do is rewrite one of the equations if needed. So if one of the equations is already in y equals mx plus b or or even x equals my plus b. It's really not m because it's not a slope. But in that format where y is already isolated or x is already isolated, if you've already got one of the equations in that form, you wouldn't need to do step one. You've already got it. So this is only if neither equation has got a variable that's isolated, then you would need to pick one of the equations and rewrite it so that it's got an isolated variable. Step two you're going to substitute the isolated expression in place of the variable for your alternate equation. So the equation that's not in simplified form, you're going to take the simplified one and plug it in for the non-simplified one. This might seem confusing at first. I promise it makes a lot more sense once we do it. Step three, you solve for the variable. Whatever variable is left over, you solve for it and you'll get a value. Step four, take that value, substitute it back into one of the original 
That's really important. It has to be an original equation, not your rewritten one. Because what if you rewrote it wrong? If you mess up when rewriting it, then you don't want to plug it into a wrong equation. You want to plug it into one of the original equations so you know you're working with something that's correct. And then you'll solve for that other variable. And then, of course, our last step is to always check. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of what I'm talking about. So let's say that we've got a negative 8x minus y is equal to negative 14, and we have a y is equal to negative 2x plus 2. Okay, in this case, one of the equations is already isolated. It's already in a slope-intercept form, okay, y equals format. So that's what I'm talking about. If it's already in that format, you don't have to do that first step. You don't have to do any rewriting. What you would do is you go straight on to step two. And step two is just to go ahead and take this value and plug it in. So I'm going to take this value of y that I have here. I said y is equal to negative 2x plus 2. And I'm going to plug it in for this y right here. So bear with me. Let's rework through this. I'm going to rewrite. This negative 8x is not going to change. This minus sign is still going to come down. But what does happen to change is that value of y. y is no longer y. y is now this expression. So if I had said y was 5, you would plug 5 in here. But I'm saying y is negative 2x plus 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 2x plus 2. Okay, and then it's equal to 14. Okay, from here, I would go ahead and solve. So technically, there is a 1 in front of this. This minus 1 times that quantity. So this now becomes a negative 8x. A negative 1 times a negative 2x is going to become a positive 2x. And a negative 1 times a positive 2 is now going to become a negative 2. And that's equal to 14. Okay, from here, we'll go ahead and combine like terms. So I'm going to combine this negative 8x and this positive 2x together. That's going to give me a negative 6x minus 2 is equal to 14. I'm then going to go ahead and add 2 to both sides. That gives me a negative 6x is now equal to 16. Oh, I messed up right here, guys. I'm so sorry. This is supposed to be a negative. I was wondering what was wrong. See, be careful. Make sure you check everything. So this should be a negative 12. This should be a negative 12. All right, then we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 6. And when I divide by a negative 6, it's going to give me a positive 2. So I'm going to get x is equal to a positive 2. All right, now that I have my value of x, what I want to do is go ahead and take that value and plug that back in to one of these equations. So which equation do you think would be the easiest to plug x into in order to solve for y? I don't know about you, but I would go with this one. The fact that it already has y by itself, it's simple to plug x in, and then I just get what y is equal to. So that's the original equation I would go with. So y is equal to negative 2x plus 2. I'm going to replace that x with a positive 2. So that would now give me y is equal to negative 2 times 2 plus 2. Okay, that becomes y equaling a negative 4 plus 2. 
and negative 4 plus 2 is going to give me a negative 6. So we get y is equal to, or sorry, not negative 6, negative 2. y is equal to negative 2. Okay, the last thing that you're going to want to do is to go ahead and check it. So we're going to take the other equation that we did not use, and we're going to substitute the values in. So we're going to have a negative 8 times... 2, because x is equal to 2, minus my y value, which was a negative 2, and this is supposed to be equal to negative 14. Well, negative 8 times a positive 2 is a negative 16. A negative times a negative 2 is a positive 2, and a negative 6 plus 2 is going to give me negative 14. So that works. So my solution is going to be a positive 2 for x and a negative 2 for y. Okay, it's a long process. I completely understand if you're a little frustrated right now. It is lengthy. But the more we practice it, the better it will get. Okay, let's try another one. Go with 5y minus 5x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 8y. Again, I don't have to rewrite anything. I have a, an equation that has a variable already isolated. That x is already isolated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that value of x and I'm going to substitute it in for this value of x. I'm going to replace that. Okay, we're going to substitute it in for that value of x. So that means this is 5y minus 5 times the quantity of 8y. Okay, I'm replacing that x with this 8y. Nothing else is changing in the equation. Everything else is remaining the same. You're just changing your x into an 8y because x is equal to 8y. Okay, now we can go ahead and work through it. 5y minus that 5 times the 8y is going to come out to 40y, and that's equal to 0. Well, these are like terms right here. We can actually go ahead and do 5y minus 40y. That's going to give us a negative 35y is equal to 0. We would then just go ahead and divide both sides by negative 35. But 0 divided by any number is just going to come out to 0. So y is going to be equal to 0. All right, from there, I'm going to go ahead and choose one of the equations to substitute it into. And I hope you're thinking this equation, because this would be the easiest one to check it into or substitute it into. So x is equal to 8y. That means x is going to be equal to 8 times 0, because y was equal to 0. Okay, 8 times 0 is going to give me 0. So in this case, x is going to be equal to 0. And then we have to just go ahead and check. So 5y minus 5x is equal to 0. That means it's 5 times 0 minus 5 times 0 is supposed to be equal to 0. Well, 5 times 0 is 0 minus another 5 times 0, which is 0, and 0 minus 0 is 0. So that works. So then here's our solution. Our solution is just 0, 0. Okay, take a look at one more that's similar to this kind of setup where you don't have to worry about rewriting anything because one of them is already rewritten. It's if I give you y is equal to 2x plus 6. Don't have to rewrite that. It's already written in the format I want. So we've got 3y minus 6x 
is equal to 18. What I want to do is I'm going to take this value of y and substitute it in for this y. So I'm going to have 3 times 2x plus 6 minus 6x is equal to 18. Now I would need to go ahead and distribute. 3 times 2x gives me 6x. 3 times 6 is going to give me 18. So I have 6x plus 18 minus 6x is equal to 18. Okay, so I can take that 6x and that 6x and I can go ahead and subtract them. 6x minus 6x is going to come out to 0. So I have 0 plus 18 and it's supposed to be equal to this 18. Well, 18 does equal 18, but I don't have a value for x anymore. So if my variable disappears, there's a note that you want to make. If the variable completely cancels out, and you are left with a true statement, So a true statement, meaning 18 is equal to 18, then this is going to be infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. That means that they do have the same slope and same y-intercept. Infinitely many solutions. Okay? All right. Now, let's take a look at a case where you don't have both equations. Here's your answer. Well, you don't have both equations in um, an isolated form. So let's say we've got negative 2x minus y is equal to negative 1. And then we have 5x plus y is equal to 4. You just have to pick one of the equations to rewrite. Um, for me, I would go ahead and rewrite this one. The reason that I would rewrite this one is because y already has a coefficient of a 1 and the coefficient happens to be a positive 1, whereas here this coefficient is a negative 1 for the y. It's easier to rewrite this one. So you would have to subtract the 5x from both sides, and that would give you y is equal to negative 5x plus 4. All right, so now you have two equations. I can then go ahead and take this one, this part, and substitute it in for this y. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my negative 2x minus, remember this is a minus 1, a minus 1y, and I'm going to substitute that negative 5x plus 4 in there. Okay, from there I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative 1 to the negative 5, which gives me a positive 5x, and that negative 1 to the positive 4, which gives me a negative 4. Sorry, and this was supposed to be set equal to negative 1. So we now have negative 2x plus 5x minus 4 is equal to negative 1. You're then going to go ahead and combine negative 2x and 5x together to get 3x. You have 3x minus 4 is equal to negative 1. You can then go ahead and add 4 to both sides. That's going to give you 3x is now equal to a positive 3. And then you'll divide both sides by 3. And you'll get x is equal to 1. All right, from there, you have to choose one of the original equations to substitute it into. It does not matter which one you choose, as long as you just choose one of them. I'm going to go ahead and go with that 5x plus y is equal to 4. So this is going to become 5 times 1 plus y is equal to 4. Well, 5 times 1 is just going to give me a 5. So I have 5 plus y is equal to 4. I would then just go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides. 
and I would get y is equal to negative 1. Now I need to use the other equation, the one that I haven't used, which is the negative 2x minus y is equal to negative 1, so that I can go ahead and check. So we get negative 2 times positive 1 minus a negative 1, and that's supposed to be equal to negative 1. All right, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. A negative times a negative 1 is a positive 1. And negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So negative 1 equals negative 1. So it worked. That means your solution, positive 1 for your x, negative 1 for your y. We'll do um, one more, one more example. I think this is what problem, uh, problem five. All right, so we've got x minus 8y is equal to 12, and 6x plus 3y is equal to 21. Again, I only have to choose one of them to rewrite, and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that first one, because x has a coefficient of positive 1. It'll be pretty easy to go ahead and rewrite that one. So I'm going to add 8y to both sides, and that's just going to give me the equation x is equal to 8y plus 12. So now I have x equals 8y plus 12, and I have 6x plus 3y is equal to 21. I then can go ahead and take this value of x and substitute it in to this x. Okay, so that gives us 6 times 8y plus 12 in parentheses, and we still have plus 3y is equal to 21. Then I want to go ahead and distribute. 6 times the 8y is going to give me a 48y. 6 times the 12 is going to give me 72. And then I have plus 3y is equal to 21. All right, I can go ahead and combine my y's together, so 48y and 3y can be added together to give me 51y. So I have 51y plus 72 is equal to 21. Then I'm just going to go ahead and subtract 72 from both sides. That's going to give me 51y is now equal to a negative 51. Okay, my last step is then to, to go ahead and divide both sides by positive 51. <clears throat> and I'm going to get y is equal to negative 1. So there's my y value. You then just have to take that and substitute it back into one of the original equations. So I'm going to choose the first equation to substitute it into. So I'm going to take that x minus 8 times y is equal to 12, and it's going to become x minus 8 times negative 1 is equal to 12. Well, negative 8 times negative 1 is just going to give me a positive 8. So I have x is equal to 8 plus 12. Or sorry, is, is equal to x plus 8 is equal to 12. Sorry, guys. We're then going to go ahead and subtract the 8 from both sides, and you're going to get x is equal to 4. All right, from there, you just check, so you use your second equation. So you have 6x plus 3y is equal to 21. This becomes 6 times 4 plus 3 times negative 1 is equal to 21. 6 times 4 is 24. 3 times negative 1 is a negative 3. And when you add 24 and negative 3 together, you're going to get 21. So 21 is equal to 21. So there's your solution then. 
x is 4, and y is a negative 1. Okay, I strongly, strongly encourage that you do the IXL first before attempting the quizzes. Do the IXL first before you attempt the quizzes. Okay, because the IXL will give you a lot more practice um, perfecting this before you try attempting those quizzes. Okay? And if you have any questions at all, you know you can always text me.